Hello everyone! So glad to see you and very happy to see that you've tuned in to watch our haul. I hope that everybody's sales are good and that you're finding some delightful, fun, different stuff. Um, so at Alice Ops this week, we're going to share with you um, the treasures that we found last weekend at garage sales and also uh, from the weekend before uh, when we went to Hemingford Townwide sale, one of our favorite fun rural sales. Um, it was a beautiful day. We found some good stuff, but it was also a beautiful rural setting and we really enjoyed the vista and beautiful landscape and um, it'll be lots of fun to show you what we got there. Um, we're Friday night. We're on the eve of a uh, picking day tomorrow. I've got some estate sta sales to go to. I've got some um, garage sales. We found um, a good number of sales. So I will tell you first of all, and that last weekend, we encountered a garage sale where there were ups and downs. I picked up a bunch of little things for $15. That's a pretty good price. Um, some of the things we picked up were these mugs. And I'll show you the other mug, which is a lot like it. And these two mugs, I thought, beautiful kind of bone china British and I don't really think they are. They have a Made in India sticker on the bottom, um, but it does say bone china. I'll have to do more research, but I think they may not be worth very much. But I do think they're charming and they might still get something. It's one of those things that they basically cost me $1.50 each. Um, I could possibly keep them because I think they're, they're very well done. Um, so that's one of those things just to share with you. You know, sometimes I pick up stuff, I don't know what I'm doing, uh, but it's fun to try um, because I'm certainly not going to take the time and look up every single thing that I lay my hand on at a garage sale, I'd never be done. However, at the town wide, I saw this mug. This mug was 10 cents. And when I had a look at it, um, it's stamped Royal Worcester, or Royal Worcester, as it's sort of pronounced, um, made in England. And uh, when I looked that up, it's part of this line that's the Zodiacs. Um, it can bring in possibly about $15, maybe 10 to 15. That's an easy decision because for 10 cents, I don't mind if some of the sales we make are $12, let's say. Um, it's, it's definitely worth a try. This is another mistake. You would think that anything coronation or royal related is going to have some sort of value. Um, I picked this up for two dollars. It's made in England but it's Staffordshire and it's not bone china. Now I knew that because you know it's coarser. It's like pottery but still I thought the, the print was very fetching. Um, it's commemorative. It's a jubilee cup not worth a darn cent. So if you ever see this, run the other way. At an estate sale last weekend, um, we're being serenaded by our cat right now, um, I found this and it was a dollar and I thought, oh surely, surely this is something that would be, you know, it's made in Japan, it's papier mâché, it's a nodder or bobbing head. Um, it's whimsical. Um, some people might want it for oriental decor or never mind, not, a, not worth anything. 
I tell you, I was batting a thousand last weekend. But back at our sale um, at Hemingford, there was this one place we stopped. Um, in mid-afternoon, too. It wasn't like we were there first thing in the morning. Uh, these people had a bunch of stuff and they obviously wanted to make some room. This was $2. Um, you know, it would be easy to say that, oh, it's Murano glass and the truth of it is it's very hard to identify that if it doesn't have a sticker or you don't know yourself where it was bought um, or made. But it's quite attractive. There are little gold flecks in it like flecks of gold, I think, uh, uh, inserted in the glass when it was made. Um, it's a good size. I think that some people who collect art glass, like um, Murano type glass anyways, uh, or Fenton, could be attracted to that. And at $2, I imagine it, it will go and will make a little bit of profit at the same sale we found this. So basically at that point, once I had picked up a couple things, um, we started being told, oh, it can be three things for $5. Well, uh, um, they had all kinds of vintage and antique things. So I started just picking up stuff. I thought this was an interesting duo. I don't think the swizzle sticks necessarily have to do with the jar, but they could certainly um, be put in there. And if you're going to have some drinks, you bring your your beautiful nautical bucket over with your swizzle sticks in it. This is what these are. They're glass swizzle sticks that you would um, twirl in your drink to get rid of the carbonation if you wanted to. Um, or just for effect. But I really do think this is very fetching. I love that blue nautical theme. That's something that can be collectible. It's just pretty. And that was the equivalent of about a dollar. At the same place, we got this. I think quite a few of you will know what this is, but you know, if you don't, I wouldn't blame you because it's not immediately apparent, perhaps. Um, nice vintage, I would even say antique probably because it wasn't really used after that. Does not go this way. Goes this way. And you would have usually a bracket uh, screwed into your wall or perhaps a piece of furniture where you would insert this and here you place your flowers, little posies, maybe just one flower. And it holds your flower and it's etched. And it just is, I think, very decorative and, and fun. And that was about $2 uh, from that same sale for a dollar. We got this little piece of glass. Uh, which again, I, I just like the look of this. It's vintage. It's uh, it's well made. I like the uh, the white edge to this glass, and it's almost like an opalescence um, that I really like. So for a dollar, I thought I would see if someone else out there would like it. This is a figurine we picked up at a garage sale last week, and it's a Ladro figurine. Some of you may be very well acquainted with it. It's a very collectible, I believe it's Spanish. Uh, it's usually, I think, correctly pronounced Yadro. It's L-L-A-D-R-O. This particular figurine is called Curious Girl, um, and uh, she's in very good condition. Some Ladro stuff is worth quite a bit, some of it not so much. I had one figurine I sold 
not that long ago for maybe twenty five, twenty eight dollars, and I had picked it up for seven, I think. So eh. uh, this one seems to be a little older. This particular stamp model, and and um, I've seen it go. Well, we think the older model is worth a bit more, like around two hundred dollars, but. The, the same type of figurine with another stamp, a stamp that's a little different from this one, is um, selling for maybe $50, $70 at any rate. Um, should be more than the $5 I paid for it. <laughs> so I think this is, a, this is a better one. That was a better choice. Yay me. Um, still at this Hemingford estate garage sale, I found this charming thing. Um, obviously an advertising piece for a Stero. Uh, and it does have that great big crack in it, but it was a dollar. And I think that collectors either of the uh, Stero sort of stuff or of peculiar cups might be interested. It's definitely vintage and it says a cube makes a cup. Although my mom said that is not a cup. You could never fit a whole cup in there. <laughs> True, um, but I don't think that's what they meant. I picked this up and this would have been about a dollar. Um, picked this up at a garage sale, um, mostly because it's a, a nice enough uh, graphic on it. The ivy, you know, against the soft yellow background is nice, but I picked it up mostly because it's Wedgwood, and um, some people collect Wedgwood. It's a very good quality porcelain, and we'll see where that goes. That was about $2. Continuing on um, at the Hemingford garage sale, this is just a little commemorative cup with a pig leaning out of it. And someone might think that's very cute or someone might have gone to this particular school and would want a memory of that. I thought I would try it. I'll show you my Coronation Street mug. Some of you might be fans. I used to watch Coronation Street very much because I love England, basically. Um, and, um, you know, it's a commemorative mug with one of the original or nearly original main characters. Um, and I thought it was just a few cents, basically. It got thrown in with a bunch of other stuff. So that's always a, a fun thing to pick up uh, um, TV related items, especially when they're commemorative because there are less of them made. Then I was really thrilled with this. This came with another box of the same material, a sort of satiny material. Uh, it was a longer box and if you have not guessed, um, this is for hankies. I think some people would also um, use them sometimes for nylons, perhaps. And so we're talking about, you know, probably, I'm, I'm guessing the 50s. It's definitely vintage and someone out there may know better than I do. But, uh, you know, I would say somewhere in that, that era. And it came with all of these nice... Uh, scarves and hankies. So that was a lot of fun. And I'll just throw them all in there. This one and the other longer box, which I imagine is a glove box, came to two dollars for the two boxes and the hankies. Uh, this was made by Dreamhouse Accessories, I think. And it's fun because both of them are stamped too, so you can identify them better. I've 
is run into stuff like this now and again, but uh, I always had the, the problem of they were pretty expensive and I didn't I didn't really know what they were worth, you know, I thought, well, they can't be worth that much, so I didn't want to pay like $10 a piece, you know, but at a dollar a piece, well, you know, I come to find that usually about maybe, you know, 12 to $17, so it's worth, definitely worth it. We got this at the thrift store, not the thrift store. We got this at a garage sale. I'm being prompted by my husband. I completely forgot. Okay, we got this at a garage sale. Uh, this one is interesting. It's a can opener, an electric can opener. Um, interesting because uh, it was designed by a German designer and is collectible because of its design. I think we paid just $2 for that. And... Um, some people have sold similar things. Well, they were trying to sell it for a hundred dollars. We will see what happens, but definitely good when it's designed by someone pretty cool and well known. Uh, this I bought at the thrift store as well. And that was, I think that was $2. There are a couple rhinestones missing, but as I've said before, I never let that stop me because I have sold brooches easily for $27 that were just pot metal. You know, it, it depends of the theme very often, I find. It, it really depends what the brooch represents or the design or... So go right ahead, buy those brooches. Um, I love this one because it's a large floral basket. Um, I think it's a very attractive theme and that would probably be from what about the 40s to 50s. I really like it. I got this uh, at a garage sale and um, it's stone and this little green thing is plastic unfortunately but the rest uh, it looks like it was all hand worked. It's a pendant. I thought that's very distinctive. Um, somebody might really enjoy that in that sort of bohemian feel. Um, so that wasn't expensive either. It was two dollars and I thought well worth a try. And now I bring you some of my very favorite things from last weekend. So first of all, here is this huge amethyst ring. And for those of you who like amethysts, I think this is a terrific piece. I love the way it's faceted. I love the way it sits high on your finger. Um, it's possibly silver. Usually I would say it's been set. Maybe it's a lower grade of silver, but it's beautifully set. It's open at the back so that the, the light can really go through it. Um, and that was in that lot of $15 items. I think, you know, it probably came to about $2. I may keep it for a bit. And then I will release it onto the world. And then, and then... So I'm just tossing items together and while the woman who was running the sale was talking to someone else, I kept looking back and going, wait, wait a minute, what is this? And found this um, beautiful necklace. I didn't even check to see if it was signed or anything. I thought, oh, it's so 1940s, reminiscent of Art Deco. Pro probably, I would say, later than Deco, though. But, you know, it's that geometric pattern here, repeated like this. Ah, I love those big rhinestones. They're, they're different, if you'll notice. You know, if you take a piece from the 40s and a piece from the 60s, the quality of the rhinestones are 
the size, the way they're faceted, it's just got a different light and a different feel to them. And lo and behold, I get it home. I'm thinking, this is really good quality. I wonder if it's Coro. Yep, it's signed Coro right there on the clasp. So that's neat. It, it's not tons of money, but I'm just saying for $2, it'll be a pleasure to sell. Um, because I know what it is and I think it's a really good design. So, you know, maybe 15, maybe $20, maybe a little more. At least with a piece like that, you've got the possibility of a little more money. And my piece de resistance, because I've never found something quite like that before, is this. And I bet you this is Bakelite because this really looks like the 30s to me. 30s, maybe 20s. That has that slight Art Deco with the, the disc in the middle, this very solid geometric, um, nice vintage rhinestones belt buckle um, with that lovely vintage green. So here we are. Uh, these were some of the highlights. We've gotten a lot of stuff and sometimes I don't know where to start. So hopefully we will do another one of these very soon. Hopefully you're having lots of fun and ramping up for the Halloween Thanksgiving season and just enjoying some really good time treasure hunting. Hopefully you've got the right weather for it. Have a good time and we'll talk to you soon.